Hi everybody, Andy here from Maple Cinetech, and today I'm looking at the brand new PMW 350 from Sony. This is their latest in the line of XD Cam EX cameras, uh, records to those S by S memory cards that we saw on their EX1 and EX3. Uh, and this camera utilizes a two third inch version of that same chip. So the EX1 and 3 utilize the Exmor CMOS chip. Now we have that same chip in a larger size and in a larger form factor camera. So uh, it's very nice to see they've They've taken it up, and it's the first CMOS camera that we've seen in this type of uh, shoulder-mounted camera before, so very cool. Uh, the sensor itself has been very impressive to me. Uh, it does very well in low light, has minimal skew on, on pans, uh, and uh, it does very well uh, even in relatively high gain, so it's very clean, uh, and I'm actually just uh, sort of blown away what it, what it can do, uh, and I think you will be too. Uh, the next thing that's very nice to see on this is that the camera comes with this viewfinder. This is the same LCD as seen on the one and the three. That same really pretty LCD is here now, uh, redesigned to slide and be adjustable on this body. And uh, I can rotate it around and look at it through this in a traditional viewfinder type way or flip it up that way, flip it up this way. So a lot of options there in terms of viewing. I can rotate the image around with, on the front with the controls there. So very cool. Uh, this is not the, cam the lens that comes with the camera. There is a Fujinon lens designed for this camera specifically that will be packaged with the camera uh, in one version of the camera that's less expensive. Uh, and I've heard really great things about that lens. But I just put a, a Canon lens on here and just rest assured that any B4 mount, uh, two third inch type lens can go on the camera and works beautifully on there. So that's what we've done and I've been very impressed with that function. Um, looking at the form factor of the camera, it's the traditional form factor that you see in all B4 mount uh, shoulder mounted cameras. Now, saying that, I mean all the switches and all the, the outputs and so on are in the same place you expect them to be. So uh, just looking at the side of the camera here, uh, you're going to see uh, that uh, all these plugs and so on, all these switches are in the same place. Uh, my white balance and black balance controls are here, my shutter options are here in the front. Uh, my gain switch is in the same place, my, my white balance switch is in the same place, so very normal. What I do like on the side here is that they have uh, changed this first switch to be a user-definable user switch, and then also have several more working up to the top handle here. So I have six user-definable buttons in all. Uh, that gives you a lot of options in terms of programming and so on. Additionally, I have this color temperature button. Uh, notice that I do not have a color filter uh, wheel here. I just have an ND filter wheel. I have many, uh, several different ND options, but no color options. But this button helps with that. I can program it to be a different temperature, and so uh, it's a nice option to have. Uh, additionally, up here I have my normal monitoring options, alarms, and, and uh, volume controls as well. Moving back across the camera, uh, you're going to see uh, that we have uh, several more buttons. Now, this is your sort of traditional audio and time code controls, as well as a thumbnail control panel. Uh, unlike the EX1 and the EX3, uh, when I hit the thumbnail button here, it will immediately jump to the playback mode, the thumbnail mode. Uh, no need to restart. It's very quick. Hit the button. I control my settings here, and then come to the top of the camera to control uh, playback. This is your play, stop, rewind, and so on. So uh, I like this a lot because it's just very quick. Uh, great to have on set that way. Um, moving back to the side here, you see I have just my traditional time code and uh, audio options. Now, what I like about this is that I have four tracks of audio uh, on the camera. The X1 and 3 just have two tracks of audio, but now I have two XLR inputs in the back, a dual stereo input on the front, that's a single stereo input I mean, uh, XLR 5 pin, and also I have a wireless input here for a, a dual channel wireless unit slot. So I can set up that here, and then I can independently control all four channels of recording. That's I have four different dials here. So this is very nice and, and relatively unique for this body design to have four independent channels. So you know your audio guy is going to really like to have that there. Above that, we have this LCD here. And this LCD has all your battery levels, your how much media you have left, your audio levels. So just a traditional LCD for viewing uh, your, your current status, your audio guy like that as well. Moving to the back of the camera, we're going to see I have several different uh, plugs. This is actually very traditional stuff. They have this little octopus of covers and so on. But uh, uh, the stuff we have here is uh, your, your DC input, your audio, XLR inputs, 
your XLR audio output, your paint box controls, and an HDSDI output. So same 422 uncompressed output that you have on the X1 and 3. Uh, additionally, I have a paint box control there working with a Sony paint box. And then I have this little iLink output. Now, um, iLink uh, before was uh, sort of an option for only 25 megabit mode, uh, but now I can record in uh, full HD and uh, actually output an HDV signal at the same time. Uh, I mean by full HD, I mean the 35 megabit and have the 25 megabit HDV output at the same time. So uh, this is a very nice option. I can also choose to have it go out in SD at the same time. So you could stream that out on the web if you like. Uh, the battery here, I put a Dionic Anton Bauer battery on it, but it has a traditional V-mount battery type uh, on here that you can use, the Sony battery type or IDX battery type. And because this camera is only 18 watts in power, this 90 watt hour battery uh, lasts a very, very, very long time. So it's a very low power camera. I love the fact that it can go for many, many hours with this small light battery on it. Coming around to the back side, the other side of the camera here, I have a couple more outputs, your time code and gen lock options. Time code and gen lock are here, just like you expect them to be. But I also have an HDMI output, which is another digital output that you may find used for. Above that, I have a car two card slots. A little door closes them up. Uh, I put my S Boy S cards in there as I normally would. Um, and uh, I have a slot select button here as well. So quickly change slots if needed. That's very handy right there. So that's about it for the outside of the camera. There's a lot of nice features here. Uh, but really, I like it because it just feels like a normal full-size camera. No big surprises. But let's go in the menus and see all this sort of things they've done under the hood that really impressed me.